Hello everyone and welcome to Linux Desktop December part 18 where I'll be reviewing the i3 window manager. Now initially I wasn't going to review this because it was a window manager rather than a desktop but having looked at it a bit further, now it is really a usable desktop. It's certainly not point and click though, no 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 no. It is a keyboard use really. So happily there's a lot of keyboard shortcuts written on the side of the screen and it's very easy to find the reference card because without it <laughs> You'll be pretty much lost, I think. Well, no, it's usable, but you won't get the most out of it. So it's available for pretty much every Linux distro. And I'm using it here on Sparky Linux, which is based on Debian. It's just because it's really easy to install new desktops in Sparky Linux. It's pretty much point and click. So it makes my job a bit easier. Now, starting with a look at the memory usage, and I can use the terminal shortcut there, this on the right-hand side, for mod and enter. So Windows key and enter. 3-M, using 174 mega RAM. Now to get out of here, Control q uh, no, it isn't for terminal, is it? Escape, no. What is it for terminal? Don't know, it's not listed. So the common list of shortcuts is very useful. So look, opening up the file manager. So mod, control, and F. So file manager, and let's pick something else. So the web browser with mod, control, and W. And you see what it does here? It starts splitting the screen down. So modern enter. So now we've got three applications on the screen side by side. Now if you decide, no, I don't really like that layout, we can change it. So you can hold down the mod and shift key and use the arrow keys. You can move it around that way. Useful. Holding down the mod key and just the arrow keys highlights a different application. Using modern F changes it to full screen. Use modern F again to get out of full screen. So if I press modern V, that should now give me a vertical split. So if I open up another application, let's open up another terminal. And if I do modern H here, that will give me a horizontal split. So now another terminal again. It does take a bit of getting used to though. Um, I'm still pretty much looking at the keyboard shortcut keys on the Wikipedia page on my mobile phone. So you can do different virtual desktops as well, and that's the mod and number key, so mod and two, desktop two, mod and one, back to desktop one. Give me a web browser, so control mod and W. Let's take a look at the manual to get a better idea of the shortcuts. Da -da -da -da. So we've got default key binding view there, very useful. Closing windows. I should have checked this out for the Q terminal, which doesn't provide an easy way of closing. So let's try that. Control and W. Doesn't work. Or we can press Shift Mod Q to kill a window. Shift Mod. Shift Mod Q. Oh, there you go. That gets rid of it. So floating mode. Mod Shift and space. Now can I resize it? I still can't, but I can move it around. So can we get out of floating mode by mod, shift and space again? So opening other applications, so we've got the D menu, so that's modern D. That appears there at the top of the screen, so oh, that's quite a lot, isn't it? Uh, so we've got GIMP on here, yeah, and uh, no, it doesn't have GIMP. I thought it did. Inkscape, nope, probably doesn't have that. I don't know why it's not scrolling across to the right and it thinks it's busy. That's like picked up every single executable on the system, hasn't it? So not all the GUI applications. Aptus, apt us. Apt us. No, because it's not called Aptus. Ah, Sparky Aptus, there it is. So I'll get there in the end. So yes, there is a way of opening up other applications. So anything much else here, because there's so much you can do with it. So you can do custom key bindings. I'll leave this for you guys to investigate if you want to check it out, but I think uh, for the purposes of this review, um, I think we've sort of covered just the feature exists here and uh, showing the main features of the desktop. There's an awful lot to it, it really is a case of RTFM. I think this desktop could be quite useful for certain working environments, if you're looking after loads of servers for instance. and. Uh, you could have quite a few of them up on the screen and then resize to make them bigger if you're actually doing some work on a particular screen and don't just want to monitor it, for instance. For an average everyday desktop, oh, I don't know really, I wouldn't use this. I think you could probably get used to the keyboard shortcuts, 
but right now first time use it's like okay I've got to look in the instruction manual I've got to sit here in the web browser and actually uh, read this through so that was a look at the i3 window manager thanks for watching see you all later Thank you.